What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build video for today. So today's video, we have a Titan build that is one of the most commonest and easiest builds to create when it comes down to building around fast ability regen for any subclass in mind, without the need of heavily investing. Now, using the Titan Behemoth class, Cryo Slam and Tectonic Harvest aspect, Glacial Grenades, Whisper of Fissures, Shards, Durance and Heart of Inmost Light, we can create a build that is similar to the last build we did that focused on grenade regen, but this time round we will utilize the fast ability regen from Heart of Inmost Light, and then combine it with the aspects and whispers so that our abilities will always be active from one after another, without needing to invest in our stats. The idea here is to make sure you have a full tray of abilities ready to be used whenever you like, without needing to rely on your stats to make the build work and is a great way for new players who need a quick build there and then. With the build, you can get a unlimited grenade, unlimited barricades and unlimited melee and all you need to do is just use your abilities to trigger this all. Now for the sake of customizations, we are going to chuck in some charge with light mods to spice the build up and we will use the reactive pulse mod whilst using our melee as backup to when the animation ends for how open and vulnerable we will become. The most simplest build you play with may end up being the most strongest you'll main for anything. So starting off with the subclass, we will be using the Behemoth Titan class with the Cryo Slam and Tectonic Harvest aspect and Whispers of Fissures, Shards and Durance fragments. With the aspects and fragments combined, we will be able to slide into our frozen targets and cause a large stasis explosion that will pack more punch and have a wide radius than normal, while also producing miniature shards that can boost our melee cooldown and further increase our abilities effects at all. Now the whispers can be changed to however you like, as the exotic being used will only be affected upon the abilities being used. So you could use whispers of bonds for an increase in super regen for example, as your stats shouldn't matter so much here. Whatever you choose will still play a major part within the build as the increasement in abilities will still serve you well and a great way of customising how you want to build to fit your own playstyle. Sadly, Titan's Whisper slot options are limited until you lock the second aspect like shown. One slot is still enough though, as the build won't need you to focus too heavily in one area to make the rest of the abilities work, as long as you have the Heart of Inmost Lights active, and then have a perk or mod available to enhance the few areas that are missing, then this build will pop off fine for you, but I would recommend you get this second aspect as soon as you can. Now for your grenades, I will recommend you use the Glacial Grenades to the fullest for the offensive and defensive role. The Glacial Grenades will offer the most for you when combined with the Whisper of Fissures because of their radius and how you can utilize all the individual ones with the Whispers of Fissures for maximum benefits. You get around 4-5 to five of them to spawn and destroying them individually will proc the perk, so as you'll see later, this is how you can crowd control an area with one single grenade. For the weapons, you're going to have free reign as to what perks and weaponry suit you. I would advise you to have perks that cater to individual stats so you can have a free flow of abilities always coming available at you for whatever activities you're doing. My primary I'm using the perfect paradox with field prep and trench barrel and the idea for the shotgun is to use it to close the gap with my melee and also use it for destroying frozen targets easily. The role I have best suits the place I will going to be aimed for. Field prep for a large ammo reserve and fast reload while kneeling and then the trench barrel for unloading into enemy and gain a damage boost while doing so. Both of these in hand will be useful when I use my grenade to freeze or slow down enemies and quickly finish them off, or use my melee and close a gap, stun and freeze target and then quickly finish with the shotgun. As the weapon is a rapid fire frame as well, this means it also fires in full auto which is good for the trench barrel side of things and me using this against specific bosses is very viable, as long as we don't get killed in the process. For a secondary, I'm using the Norn Hunger AR with Fill Prep and Demolitionist, and in this instance, I'm using the AR for a boost in grenade energy regen, while we also utilize both our firepower mods and the exotic chest, and this is to make sure we can have an easy route of activating our exotic whenever we like through the method that best suits us. Now that may be counterproductive for what the build is about, but this is to help when in a situation where we can't use our melee because the map is either too small, or we can't use our barricade because a unstoppable ogre just destroyed it, etc. Having a quick and easy way to access grenades is a safe way of always having the exotic active, and in the case of our grenades, they will always become plentiful. For heavy, I've chosen to use the thermal erosion heavy machine gun with wellspring and killing wind, 
The purpose of the weapon is to use against both the tougher enemies and generally low level enemies to get a boost out of it for our well spin perk when need be. Although we have our shotgun that is great for bolstering damage, we can only do this with a limited amount of ammo available, while heavy can dump a whole load of rounds into a boss easily. The well spin perk acts like a multi purpose perk for all of our abilities and this is handy for all situations to where you use all your abilities up and need a quick way to garner abilities back. We shouldn't need to rely on the perk so much as our exotic is always active, but this is always handy to have around. For the stats, your main focus of the build is to have your main stats that will affect the abilities you're going to be using a lot within the build, so resilience, discipline and strength. Starting off with the resilience stat, you'll want this at 50 to 70 as you're going to be using your barricades a lot for personal defense, but also for activating your grenades and melee. This is the most simplest and easiest area to boost and get a lot out of when you're building your discipline and strength up as it's always going to be an area of first focus for you. Don't go above 70 as it's a waste of slots and points unless your armor stat level does that for you anyways without the use of additional mods. For discipline and strength, keep it within the 50 range as we have additional mods and perks available that will boost the following areas more. However, you can add into these areas more if you have additional spaces available and have invested in the main important areas already. Recovery is at 50 which is okay to have and can be improved on more for faster health regen and then the intellect area is at 39 and this is an area that can be left or improved on depending on if you wish to invest in more super uptime while using your artifact etc or you can just leave it if you like to. Next for the armor the main infinity you will need is solar for the charge with light and firepower mods to add into the provider slots. This should be fairly simple to achieve and gather but if not do remember you have the season pass armor that can also help. Exotics being used will be the Armentarium for the double grenades and they will also need to be solar affinity for the above reasons once again. Don't worry if you don't have the exotic as you can still make it work within your favour. Now as we have covered the main list of setup we are using, here are the mods we have and how they overall affect the build. So starting off with the head we have recovery and sustained charge mod. Then we have arm with discipline, impact induction and firepower mod. Chest we have minor strength. Concussive Dampener times 2 and Firepower mod. Leg, we have Recovery and Firepower mod. Mark, we have Distribution and Stacks on Stacks mod. The ability to have certain abilities within your loadout, being freely available whenever you like, is something that's always worth investing in, as it means you don't need to focus on one selected ability to do all the work, but rather you can pick and choose which one you want to start and end with. Not a lot of exotics are like the Heart of Inmost Light in terms of flexibility. And although the Traveler's Chosen is similar in the way they function, it requires the user to activate it after every stack made, or else it won't be counted while the Exalted Chest will automatically activate instantly on the ability activation, with no weight involved. Interestingly, adding the two will increase the ability synchronization by quite a bit, if you wish for a more instant approach. Now with the exotic combined with the behemoth stasis abilities, we can have a flow of ability energy going from left, right and centre, however we like, as long as we knuckle down on the required abilities you want. Now for a safety measure, I've reinforced my grenade stat as I plan to utilise this area a lot for every contact I choose to use this in. Mods such as firepower and demolitionists are the common core items to have but can be switched here and there if you want to invest in melee for example, which works out well for powered melee being used. On top of the simplicity of the build, I've added in the ability to use warm and cells for both damage and extra protection via the reactive pulse mod. This here will work in conjunction with the powered melee when heading deep into enemy territory and when also combined with the glacier grenades plus fissures aspect, we can create a safe but deadly method of engagement against the bigger enemies. As you can tell the build covers the main aspect of abilities with the exotic and it doesn't need to be expanded on even more considering it's doing everything that you wanted to do which is perfect for picking up and using straight away in whatever content you have in mind such as nightfalls, gambits, raids or pvp, generally anything. A simple low maintenance build can go a long way for all who use it and with the customization of stasis class available, we can bend it to further expand on the build more for more stasis, more super energy or more grenades. In the future we may get more aspects available to which they may offer some other unique features as well and with that we'll make utilizing such aspect with the build even more better than before. For now, 
I believe this build has achieved its end goal from a user perspective. All that's left now is for you to try it out, have some fun, and maybe theory craft some more and see what else you can make from it. So if you enjoyed the video, then please by all means do leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you do that type of stuff, link is down below. Once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.